Well, to start at the end, this story proves the power of love can overcome truly impossible odds. But the beginning of it is just plain heartbreaking. A five-year-old boy gets hopelessly lost from his mother in a bustling city market in the Philippines. He can't find her, so eventually he's taken to an orphanage. And he's lucky he's adopted by a caring Australian family. He goes on to lead a happy and successful life here, except something is always missing. Six months ago, 30 years after getting lost, Joel de Carteret couldn't ignore the pain any longer. He had to find his birth mother. But in a country of 100 million, where would he even start to look? Hello, Ate. Do you missing boy? No. 35-year-old Joel de Carteret is looking for himself. Missing, missing boy, 1985. He was uh, five years old. In this hot, crowded Filipino marketplace, the missing boy. he is searching for answers. Have you seen him? He needs to find clues about a little boy lost here in 1985. 1985. Hoping it might lead him to his mother, a woman whose face he can't remember, whose name he doesn't know. Do you know anyone who's been around here for a long time? Joel's incredible tale begins right here in the poor outskirts of Manila in the Philippines. I guess my earliest memories was of my mother being a dressmaker. I just remember this presence and this love um, that sort of came out of my mum. It was one small moment that changed the course of his life. I literally remember walking out here and turning right and heading down. Back in 1985, five-year-old Joel woke up in his home near the market to find his single mother already gone. She'd left for work in a sewing factory early that morning, leaving him in the care of her flatmate. She didn't want to wake me, so she just went off to work and left me at home. And it wasn't like she left me at home by myself. Like, I was in a house of, like, you know, I think it was, like, five occupants. And I remember waking up and, you know, she wasn't there. And, you know, the first child's instinct is to look for their, their mother. The five-year-old Joel set out on the unforgiving back streets, hoping to find his mum. Eventually, he reached the covered, sprawling food market. When you're inside, it's easy to see how a small boy could get lost in this chaotic, crowded maze. How long do you think you were wandering around here? Uh, for all day, I reckon. I would have been wandering around all day just trying to find my parents. It would have been a bit of a horror movie to your eyes. Yeah, like with all the knives and the pig's heads and I would have been panicking. When Joel wandered in here looking for his mum, imagine how frightening and daunting it must have been. As a tiny five-year-old, his view of this world would have looked a lot more like this. A jumbled frenzy of hustle and bustle and lots of legs attached to some very strange faces. Miraculously, though, one man recognised that this little boy was genuinely lost and rescued him from this crowded marketplace. <laughs> Jose Mancello, a kind taxi driver, saved Joel. It's OK, it's OK. I was so lucky. I was so lucky that a decent man saw that this boy was lost. He had a choice whether to take advantage or do the right thing. If it wasn't for him, chances are I could have ended up, who knows where I could have ended up. Joel was dropped off at a shelter for children, an orphanage. They searched everywhere for his mother with no luck. He was assigned a social worker who appeared in court on his behalf to make the young Filipino foundling available for international adoption. This lonely place became the only home a young Joel remembers. It was 18 months, 18 months I lived in the orphanage. Must have seemed like a lifetime at that age. Yeah, being there for so long, it's just, that's, you think that that's, that's your life now. It's just sitting and waiting and just, just wondering if they're gonna come and pick me up. Eventually, a young Joel realized 
his mum wasn't going to come. But then, just like that, his life story changed. When you look back at that photo, he's quite angelic, isn't he? Oh, and he's been angelic all his life. <laughs> a young Melbourne couple arrived, desperate to adopt the tiny boy they'd only seen in photographs. And he was a dear little boy. He looked beautiful and he had a lovely little nature. So by the end of the first day, you thought, that's it, he's a keeper? Oh, definitely. Most definitely, yes. <laughs> if you can imagine, like, you know, these people look different, they smelt different, they sounded different. But there was no hesitation when, I, when my mother, Kara, said, you know, would you like to live with these, with, these, with these people in Australia? I was like, yeah, I do. You know, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Julie de Carteret is Joel's adoptive mum. She couldn't wait to bring him home. I'll never forget it. We, we got onto the Qantas aircraft and Joel was just a little kid and he went, oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> the young Filipino adoptee settled quickly into life in suburban Melbourne. He just slotted in beautifully. He was determined that he was going to speak English. He learned English from watching Tony Barber's Sale of the Century every single night. <laughs> Every night he would repeat the words that were said on that, on that show every night. And Tony Barber was his hero for a long time. <laughs> Joel's adoptive parents separated soon after he arrived back in Australia. But Australian life with Julie still treated Joel well. He graduated school looking Filipino but every bit the Aussie teenager, interested in filmmaking and hip hop. When I dance, it's for me about telling a story about it. And in 2008, he was a finalist on hit reality TV show, So You Think You Can Dance. But Joel always hoped his Filipino mum might still be alive. When I think about the years and the pain and the separation loss and the grief that she has, she's gone through, you know, it's like there is a bit of that, like, oh, man, like... It's kind of like guilt to, to have had that blessed life, you know. So last year, 30 years after he was lost, he decided to begin the daunting search for his biological mum. It's just so hard, like, where do I start? And I, I, I told myself, like, I just have to get there. When I get there, I'll just figure it out. Hello. But in a country of 100 million people, and without so much as his mother's first name, or any indication of whether she was still alive, to his Aussie family, the task seemed utterly impossible. Indeed, a road to heartbreak. I was worried about how he would be able to move on when he didn't find his mother. In my mind, it wasn't if he didn't find her, it was when, because there was no name, there was no birth date, there was no region, there was nothing to go on. I have always, in my heart, just thought that it was just a brick wall that he would strike. Still, Joel was determined. Late last year, he returned to the Philippines and Munoz Market, trying to find some thread, any clue about who his mother might have been. Good afternoon out there. You're missing boy. And then, after a month of tireless searching, finally, a lead. He's in another house. Stall holders remembered a young boy named Dante, who had gone missing from the same market in the 1980s. Dante, he had very similar characteristics as me. Very quickly, the workers at Munoz Market located Dante's parents, named Vicky and Danny. And Vicky needed no convincing that Joel was her missing son, Dante. I actually started showing her other photos of me in the orphanage and other younger photos. She, she broke down crying and, and she was looking at the photos and pointing and going, that's Dante, that's Dante. Coming up. It was a big wake up call for both Vicky and I. Joel's joy turns to heartbreak. And you wanted to believe. I, w I definitely wanted to believe. And how this TV star came to the rescue. The question 
was hanging. We had to find the answer. That's next on 60 Minutes.